Hey guys, I've been animating Reel for the past two weeks and I wanted to share some tips that I found while animating that really help out with my workflow. So the tip number one is all about modifying the arcs of the character in the viewport. So we all know that animation is all about following the arcs of the animation. If we want to see the arc of the foot, we select the control that we want to use uh, we go to trail and we go here i click show so here we can see how the animation is working and here we can see we have a weird frame here that is preventing us from having like smooth curve so one of the cool things that i found is that you can modify this curve here in the viewport here you can see that the white squares represent a keyframe if you don't see that you go here and you select uh, show keyframes. What the cool thing is, is that if you right click on the keyframe, you can then, you have a, a gizmo that you can then pull down. So you can smooth the curve. So as you can see now the curve is smoother now. And we all know that animation following the arcs of the motion is really important. So this is a very helpful tip that I found. Another tip that I found is that you can modify the values of the keyframe with the middle mouse button. So let's say I want to modify the value of this keyframe. The cool thing, I don't need to be on top of the, of the keyframe to move it. I can just, my mouse is over here. I can just press the middle mouse button and go up and down. And I can modify the keyframe with the middle mouse button. You're gonna also lock the values. Uh, for example, it, sometimes uh, if I have it on both, you can see that sometimes I go right or left accidentally and I move the, the timing of the keyframes. But you can lock axis that you want to work on. So for example, here, uh, I only want to work on the Y axis. And no matter how left to right I go, the timing won't change. So this is a really cool one. If you need to mirror a pose because you are working on a, a run cycle or something, you can mirror the pose using the pose tool. Uh, for example, here you can select all the controls that you want to mirror. You go to pose and this window will pop up. You Now you click here on create pose and you call it whatever. And here you can see that you save the pose, right? As you can see, you have a mirror option here. So you can select the pose that you want to mirror. You click on select controls. You click on key. So it will key whatever the selection you have here in the timeline. You go to mirror. You have to change the mirror settings to C. For example, I had a problem with my rig and I had to put this on C for it to work. But now I can just uh, paste pose and you can see it mirrored the pose and you can see that it mirrored the pose but the feet didn't mirror i have a problem where i have to mirror the feet manually but you can see that for the rest of the body it works if the same happens to you you can just you, you select the first one you copy the location you select the other one you paste the location but you have to invert the y-axis and then you do the same with the other one so and you can see now the pose is completely mirror. Another good tip to speed up your workflow is that you can use shortcuts to change the, the view mode. For example, if you control and you drag with the middle mouse to the right side, you get the front view. If you go to the upper right, you get the side view. And if you go to bottom left, you get the perspective view. So I use this a lot when I'm animating. It's very really useful. You can use a multi-selection tool to flip uh, the values of a curve, for example, here. You go to this button over here and you get the multi-select tool. And then you go to the button right and you change the scale to minus one, for example, and you will see that it will flip the curve. I end up using this a lot. Also learn the shortcut for the different handle types. For example, you can see this one here. If you press one, you will get this handle. You press two, three, four, five, and you can see they go from, from one to five. If you want to change the weight of a handle, you, you select the, the key that you want to change and then press Ctrl W and you will see that this will turn on and then you can just select one and change the, the weight uh, freely. If you press Shift while you are dragging, you can see that it will snap horizontally. If you press F10, you will see that it will only show the curves that you are selected. For example, here I, you can see all the curves and this can be very messy to work with. So if I press F10 and then you select uh, whatever control you want to modify, you can see you get all the controls uh, here. You can also type uh, Y, for example, and you will see that you will have a, a filter by whatever it, Y is controlling. Uh, if you type X, you can see you will see the locomotion X, the, the roll and the scale X. Same with C, you can see look the C. Uh, the rotation yaw and the scale C. This, that is very helpful too. Take advantages of additive 
layers. For example, if I want to do a major change to the animation, let's say that he's leaning too much forward, so I can click here on the plus icon and go to additive. Here you have a, a layer that you can edit the animation on top of. So for example, if I select this one and I go to the control that I want to modify, and I go to, okay, let's, let's run like this. And then you go play and you can see the animation changes completely. And you can uh, have multiple uh, additive layers. For example, maybe I want to add another one for the tail. And let's say here, I want the tail to be lower. And if I hit play, you can see that the tail is now very uh, low. So additive layers are great for adding uh, major changes to an existing animation. Another cool tip is that you can use the transform tool to modify the values of a whole curve. For example, if I go here, I press Ctrl T, you can see it switched to this, and then you do a marquee selection of all the curves you want to modify. Uh, for example, here working on the tail, you can see the movement of the tail now, but if I increase this, I click on the upper handle and, and the tail will go crazy. So this is a cool way to change the values of, of a curve. Another one is to make a level just for animating. You can see here I have this uh, very simple level where I have a floor, a, a, a wall to the back and a wall to the side. And you can easily see how this is very helpful because it will help you analyze how your animation is looking. You can see if you have a grid and this is a very important one. You can have different shading modes in the side, in the side view and the front view. You can just go here and just select Unlit. If you want to see the model with uh, lighting, you can go here, but you will see that it will be dark. So first of all, you have to disable the lighting component. You have to disable the shadow, uh, global illumination, and specular for it to look good. All right, I hope this video is helpful. Let me know uh, what you guys think in the comment. Uh, if you find another cool tip that will be helpful, let me know. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.